we had your dad on earlier already, but to talk about your camp that is on June 27th from 8 to 10 to p.m. at Martinsburg High School. So we have, like, all the details, I guess, but what would you, I guess, say is your goal for the camp in terms of what kids get out of it? And uh, you've done now a few of these already, so just uh, what have been your biggest takeaways from it? Yeah, I think every time that we've done it so far, um, you know, there's been more and more people show up uh, year by year. And uh, I think more than anything, the only thing I try to get kids to get out of it is just have have fun, learn something, be able to uh, hang around uh, an NFL football player. I know how cool that would have been when I was a little kid. So um, it's really not much deeper than that. You know, I don't think anybody's going to get a scholarship from coming to my camp so more than anything just want kids to go out there uh, under the friday night lights and uh you know have fun from 8 to 10 p.m tyson glad to have you back on the show thanks for joining us how much does it mean for you personally to get to give back to your community back yeah, I, I think it's great. I think that they provide me with kind of pretty much everything I could have, you know, ever wanted or needed uh, when I was growing up as a young football player. So um, each year that we're able to run these camps means that, um, you know, that I had a successful year. So the the more that we can uh, keep stacking these year after year, um, you know, the more that I think I'll be able to do for the community and, uh, you know, the more the more times we'll be able to have these camps. And when you have these camps, obviously the kids, the campers get a lot of good experience out of it. But from your perspective, as kind of being able to be that teacher instead of the, the you know, the, the student, what sort of things do you think you get out of these sort of experiences? Um, I think I'm able to kind of shed light on a lot of aspects of football that you know, these kids probably have no clue about uh, just from all the people I've been able to to be around that just have such a knowledge for the game. So uh, being able to, you know, even things that I might not even be thinking about, you know, they hear me say it and it's the first time that they're ever hearing something like that be said. So uh, it's always cool to be able to um, kind of put the young the young athletes uh, on to some of the things that, that happen at the collegiate and the, the pro level. And in some ways, that's kind of what's going on now with your NFL career because you're the only guy that returns in the Bears quarterback room this year. So you're kind of, in a lot of ways, a veteran in that sense, even though it's only year two for you. So uh, what's that adjustment been like for you and and some of the new guys coming in there? Obviously, Caleb Williams, the number one pick. uh, A lot of attention just on the Bears in general right now. Yeah. No, it's been great. And I think that um, really the only veteran aspect of of You know, my situation is that I just kind of had a better idea how to get around the facility. Um, But, you know, other than that, you know, Coach Waldron, um, you know, our our new the new quarterback we signed, Brett Rippon, um, you know, guys like that, you know, Thomas TB in there, um, just dudes that have such a knowledge for the game. So I'm, you know, pretty much in the same boat that I was last year, just soaking it all in and learning as much as I can and, you know, working to be more comfortable with all the uh, scenarios and all, through all the situations that we go through in the year with, with spring ball. And, you know, now we got camp coming up and, and all that stuff. So I think just having dudes that are just so smart, um, just being around them every day, you know, kind of puts me in the same bucket. But as far as my veteran presence, it kind of went away after the first week. Everybody knew how to get around the facility by then. So it's been great. If I can sort of follow up on that, you mentioned Coach Waldron coming in over from Seattle, had been working with Geno Smith over there. They had a pretty good offense over there. What has been that sort of adjustment for you from uh, Luke Getz's offense last year to Coach Waldron coming in this year? How much of it has kind of carried over? And what sort of new aspects of the offense have you guys been trying to learn so far? Yeah, so we uh, were able to keep our offensive line coach from last year. So um, there's a lot of similarities in the run game. Um, But all new stuff in the pass game. um, And by new stuff, I just mean new names, uh, new formations. all that stuff but you know there's only so many pass concepts you can run so people are a lot running a lot of same things but the way that uh coach waldron kind of scripts his stuff the way he installs it um i think is i think he's doing a wonderful job and i feel a lot uh you know i feel a lot more prepared more so because we were able to be there a couple weeks before the rookies got there and be able to you know install the offense um for those couple of weeks so um you know the spring i felt good uh felt comfortable and uh you know just hoping to kill it this summer and take that into the camp in in july 
looking at last year as a whole, what do you feel like was your biggest accomplishment that you had in year one in the NFL that you're trying to build upon for year two? Yeah, I think I was able to win a couple games for the squad, um, you know, which is always huge. I think that's what that's what the, that's the, the statistic that a lot of people look at uh, for quarterbacks is just the win loss record. Um, so the fact that you know the team was able to rally behind me, and we were able to get two wins out of that four game stretch. I think was was a huge accomplishment. And then um, this year, all I plan to do is just be as ready as I can be and um, continue to uh, prepare as if I'm the starter. And if my time comes, I you know let it be known and let it show that that I was ready to roll. So as you head into training camp and with this being now year two uh, for you, you kind of know what to expect. Um, I guess what's the biggest difference heading into this camp compared to last year for you? Uh, I think just the unknown aspect last year caused me a lot of uh, worry and uh, anxieties or whatever, but um, yeah, I don't know. I feel great going into going into this year. Uh, body feels great. You know, I've never been this good at football um, as I am right now, and uh, just really just continuing to just drill the the system into my into my brain, and just being able to go out there once training camp rolls around, and just really not have any hesitation with anything I'm doing um, is the thing I'm most excited most excited about, and the biggest difference I think from last year to this year. When it comes to the team as a whole, obviously expectations are starting to rise a little bit had two top 10 picks in the draft, number one pick being from Carolina. So you bring in a new quarterback, wide receiver as well, Roma Dunze. And so him and the additions to the defense, DeAndre Swift at running back now. What have you seen just from the team as a whole uh, around you at these, those other positions, how the, the defense and guys like Odunze that you get to throw to now? Yeah, I mean, our, our team is pretty stacked, you know, walking around, especially in minicamp when everybody was there, just seeing the amount of talent that we have. And, uh, you know, our defense, I, you know, in my opinion, is a top five defense in the league. Um, and, you know, we've got some guys on offense, uh, especially after the offseason we had. I think Poles uh, did a great job of, um, you know, going out there and getting current players and then doing a good job in the draft. So uh, anytime anybody asks me, I, you know, I just tell them that I think we got a shot to win the Super Bowl this year. And that is truly how I feel. And, uh, you know, there's a lot, obviously, to figure out. But I think if we figure it out, then um, we're definitely contenders this year. The short time that you've had to spend with Williams, with Rip and everybody in the quarterback room in Chicago, what are some things that you've learned maybe from them and what do you feel like are some things that you've shown to them as well? Um, man, I don't know. I do. The only thing I focus on is just uh, trying to be super just try to be a super hard worker and try to be just locked in at all times so you know I'm hoping if they if they have taken anything from me you know hopefully it's that but as far as uh, what I've learned um, you know Austin Reed's awesome funny guy I like I like Austin Reed a lot Caleb Williams is uh, very competitive um, and just the, some of the things he's able to do uh, you know off schedule uh, have been impressive to watch and something I think I could definitely um, a couple of things I could definitely add to, to my game as well and then uh, Brett he's just been great he's like um, he's kind of like for me how Nate Peterman was last year just um, really good dude um, a lot of good morals, a lot of a lot of good knowledge for the game. I think this is year six or seven for him, so he's just been around. Uh, he's been around a lot of good quarterbacks. You know, he got to hang out with, with Russell uh, Wilson for a couple of years in Denver. So, um, you know, just just overall, I, I love the quarterback room uh, and everybody in it. And I think that each person has kind of shed light on one aspect um, of football for me. And you know, like I said, hopefully I can I can do the same in some sense. I wanted to ask you, Tyson, about just maybe some of the adjustments that aren't necessarily football-related in terms of, like, living in Chicago, a big city, kind of different than what you are used to, and, and also the weather there in Chicago. And, and as the season goes on, having to play in that kind of weather and some of the adjustments you faced with that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, as my, you know, I went to Shepherd. I grew up in uh, Martinsburg. So when I left, it was my first time really I'd ever left. So it was tough uh, for the first month or so. Um, 
so I think not having not having to have that adjustment going into this year, I think will be fantastic. Uh, but as far as Chicago goes, I don't you know I don't mind it at all. It, it's a it's a, a sweet place. You know I don't go to the city all the time, but when I do, it's always a great time. Um, the area that the facilities at where I most of the time am, it's pretty similar to like you know the Frederick Maryland area. So um, it's not uh, it's not as much of a culture shock as I initially might have thought it was going to be. But um, it definitely does get cold. But um, you know they do a good job with all the resources. They got jackets, heaters on the sideline, you know, gloves, all the all the things. So uh, kind of just be you're able to deal with it the best you can. But um, doesn't change the fact that it does get cold. So just try to gear up and get ready for it because you know the other teams got to play in it too. True. You haven't had that Dolphins Chiefs experience yet, though. Uh, I don't think anybody has. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so we do a segment on on Tuesdays, our Hot Take <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, segment and I don't know how Nick landed on this being his take last Tuesday, but his was that Mercedes Lewis des- deserves more respect for the NFL career that he has had, and who, who we have here one of his quarterbacks from last year and into this year. Speak to that a little bit. He's has has had one of the like one of if not the longest careers of an NFL tight end, longest center tight end in NFL history. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Um, yeah, you know I was thinking about this a lot. Uh, because, you know, we just signed him back uh, last week. Um, so I was think, kind of thinking about it. He is the most important player on the team, um, in my opinion. Um, and I think that, you know, he's just kind of the glue to everything going on around you. Like he's, um, you know, the way he speaks every time I had a conversation with him, I wish I was just writing some of it down, like just to... You know, 20 years in the league, you know, playing at the level that he is playing, especially just, you know, and even talking to him, he's, you know, asking him how his body's feeling in year 18 last year and uh, just kind of asking him about how he feels and what how, how much longer he thinks he can play and all that stuff. And he, he literally is convinced that he's just in a different prime. Like, I think the first... 12 years I think he was a you know he was a dangerous pass catcher a good one-on-one matchup that you could take advantage in the red zone and I think from from then uh, up until this point he's just in a a a pass blocking run blocking um, prime right now you know he's jacking dudes around young guys you know he's saying he's he's talking trash just like you know everybody else out there Um, and then just post game speeches pre game speeches after practice speeches, during practice speeches, um, he is certainly, uh, you know, he certainly didn't get signed because he's the best athlete in the league. He he got signed because of just a, a wisdom and uh, just, you know, such a high character level cat. Um, so I, I think the world of Mercedes Lewis, so I don't think that's a hot take at all. Do you think... Uh there's anything that you're trying to maybe replicate with his career? Obviously, it's a different position, but if you could have that kind of longevity, uh, that would certainly you know bring more value to what you provide as well as a quarterback going forward. I agree. I don't know if I want to play 19 years, but <laughs> it is pretty. It is you know it is pretty cool, and it's cool to be around him, and it's cool to see just how he's who he's turned into over 19 years in the league. Um, but yeah, who knows? I, I mean, shit. Yeah, I'll play 19 years. I mean, play as long as you can, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Got one more break to take you good to hang out with us for the uh, final segment? Nah, man, I hate it here. Are you kidding? Nah, I kidding. Yeah, of course. (laughs) (laughs) This segment brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Buy your next vehicle online. They'll deliver it to you. If you don't like it, they'll take it back. Visit their website, FordHagerstown.com.